the scheme in which someone made an astronomical amount of money is strikingly simple. The Singaporean factory Capel manufactured a rig and through its distributor Sidril sold it to a British firm Highway Investment Processing for $248.5 million. The British firm won a tender in Ukraine and resold the rig to Chernomornovtogaz for $400 million. The excuses of the officials responsible for the procurement seem to make themselves laugh. Have you ever bought a car? Yes. Oh, have you? Do you know what a basic model is? Yes. Do you now? Is a car with air conditioning and an automatic gearbox more expensive or cheaper? It is more expensive. Make a comparison. So the complete tower is $150 million more expensive than the basic model? Who said $150 million? You said it. It wasn't me. In addition to the tower, there's a whole range of other activities, services and equipment. But we rely on documents more. The result of the tender procedure is printed in black and white on the Ministry of the Economy website. Highway investment is to provide a $400 million floating drilling rig, one unit only, that's all. If there had been additional equipment, it would have been recorded. But the organizers of the transaction, it seems, never cared to cover everything. Perhaps they sensed their impunity. Highway investment processing has evident Ukrainian roots. The company's primitive site was created by the key firm Delta X and the language of Shakespeare on the page of the supposedly reputable UK seller of drilling rigs is laden with numerous lexical mistakes. The language of this website has nothing in common with English. If it had been translated, it had been translated with an online translator, and a very bad one at that. Who is behind the British one-day firm? In order to cover their tracks, the organizers of the deal used a classic trick – offshore companies. Highway Investment Processing, registered in Cardiff, was founded by two offshore companies – Ireland and Overseas Acquisitions Limited and Milltown Corporate Services Limited. These firms are headed by citizens of Latvia, Stan Gorin and Eric Vanagels. In addition, Stan Gorin is director of Highway Investment Processing. Are these people the final recipients of excess profits from the Ukrainian budget? Shocked by the business mastery of these two citizens, we went to find them in Latvia. The 32-year-old Stan Gorin is the owner of an insurance brokerage firm in the center of Riga. We caught him at his workplace. Hello, my name is Natalie. Could we meet? Yes, one second. We briefly retell the Latvian the bottom line. Stan Gurin says that he is in no way related to the British firm intermediary that makes its money on Ukraine. Interesting question, but I have never been to Ukraine and I have no idea what this company does. What gives? We show Stanislav Highway Investments documentation, officially purchased from the British registrar. Is this not your signature? Here, yes, this is my signature. This suggests that you are the director of Highway Investment Processing, which is registered in Cardiff. Well, this company says nothing to me. If I understand it correctly, the signature you recognize as yours has been tampered with. Maybe my signature could have been copied, assigned, transferred. Gorin's signature is on another interesting document. It's a bill for a money transfer from Chernomor Naftogaz to the British Highway Investment Processing, shown by Naftogaz. The man who has allegedly received such a large sum from the Ukrainian state budget says that it is not so. So you did not sign this document, which deals with Highway's financial statements? No, so I do not know how it got there. I will ask and find out. According to the documents, Stan Gorin makes money on the sale of drilling rigs along with another Latvian, Eric Vanagels, but Gorin says he does not know his partner. Do you know Eric Vanagels? No, no. Eric Vanagels is 71. We went to his residence. It's an old and very modest house with 10 apartments. Eric Vanagels' place of registration looks more like a hostel than an apartment of a reputable businessman who sells rigs worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It's quiet behind the door, no one's at home. Neighbors say Eric Vanagels no longer lives here. The daughter of his brother is living here with her family. Have you ever met Eric Vanagels here? 
Yes, he lived here. It wasn't his apartment, it was his brother's. And when did you last see Eric Vanagels? I don't know, six, seven years ago. The neighbors say that Eric Vanagels doesn't live here anymore, but he continues to receive mail at this address. Where has he gone to and what does he do? On the street we met an old friend of the Vanegals family. He was a man who liked to drink. He was always very poor. Eric Vanegals is the founder of a company that stole 150 million dollars from Ukraine. Oh, what are you saying? 150? Never in your life, not that person. It's unknown where Eric Vanegels is right now. They say he has lost a permanent residence and lives somewhere in the suburbs. The financial police couldn't find him. They refuse to comment on specific individuals, but are well aware of how such financial schemes work. Ukrainian businessmen use offshore companies. Offshore companies are bought through law firms. A person X or Y comes to such a firm. I need two or three offshore companies. The law firms looks. If they are on good terms with the client, and the client may say if he knows that the transaction will be illegal. He'll uh, say that he does not want the person that the offshore companies is registered to be aware of what is happening. How does a law firm gain access to a person's passport data? The legal person may already have a copy of someone's passport. The person could have come in before, signed some documents and received money for them. The firm had kept a copy of the passport and fax printing and then stamped 10 or 20 offshore companies. The names Vanegels and Gorin are well known to law enforcement agencies throughout the world, in America, Russia and the Baltic states. It's not the first time that these persons, or rather their ghosts, have done business with Ukraine. The irony is that in 2009 the Timoshenko government purchased vaccines at inflated prices through the same two offshore companies through which the drilling rig was bought under Yanukovych. This was proven by auditors from the American firm Trout Catcheries employed by the Azarov government. Ukrainian prosecutors filed a criminal investigation and arrested three persons. During our investigation in the Latvian capital, Riga, we found the law firm that establishes offshore companies to participate in Ukrainian tenders. Reliable sources told us that the law firm International Overseas Services holds passport data and signatures of Stan Gorin, Eric Vanegels and other dummies and makes them nominee directors of offshore companies at the request of their real founders. The Baltic law firm that rubber stamps offshore companies has a discount program to receive their most prestigious platinum card that guarantees a 30% discount. You must found at least 25 offshore companies. It seems that Ukrainian officials are regular customers here. Power in Ukraine changes hands, but those in power continue to turn to the same Latvians for sensitive services. Perhaps the discount card gets passed on along with power. A random person can't enter the office. Using methods of disguise, we have agreed in advance about our visit and went there without a camera. Our cover is that we want to buy an offshore company to import cars into Ukraine without paying taxes. We would like to create a non-resident company. We import cars from the United States and Germany to Ukraine. It's crazy at the customs now. They overestimate the charges. We only work on recommendations with clients recommended to us by our regular clients. Because in Latvia, as in any other EU country, there is a very strict anti-money laundering legislation. So if, say, someone from Ukraine would have recommended you, we would talk more. Thus, we have received confirmation that Eric Vanegels and Stan Gorin are not the real sellers of the $400 million rig, but fences who probably did not even get paid for their services as a nominee directors. 
but the law firm International Overseas Services has good connections with the Ukrainian political brass and regime change has no effect on this long and beneficial cooperation. The only difference is that members of the previous government are criminally prosecuted for that, while members of the current government walk free and even joyfully announce the purchase of the next drilling platform.